Matthias Jonsson is a Swedish name. I don't know what it will be in Greek, but I think Matthias Jonsson, something like this. Matthias. And Jumo um, is a German company, but I'm from Sweden. So, uh, the founder of the company was named Kurt Moritz Juchheim. So, in, in initials is Juchheim Moritz, the name of Jumo. Today, um, these two guys owns the company, it's a family company. Uh, Barnard on the left and uh, Mikkel on the right. So. And we are located in Fulda, uh, south of Germany, and we were founded in 1948. And we are like 2,400 people. And we are represented in 60 countries worldwide. And we have production sites in 40 of these 14 of these countries. So uh, the revenue was 248 million euros last year. So we are a small family-owned company, and we are partners with Uteco. Yeah, short. Uh, what products we have? I used to say that we have around 3,000 different products. Uh, so we have also as Uteco temperature sensors, and we make the PT100 element that you can see down on on the left side of you that we are making. Um, we're also making liquid analysis instruments like pH measurement, conductivity, chlorine, ammonia, and so on for uh, water treatment. And for the sensors, we also have uh, yeah, sensors and in instrumentations. Next is pressure sensors. We have everything from air pressure to uh, 1,000 bars both relative and absolute. And I think in the shipping industry, um, absolute is very popular. Do not use uh, relative pressure. Or do you? Do you? Yeah. We also have level sensors that is based on uh, pressure sensors. It's a pressure element. We put it in a tube and you sink it down to a tank and you measure the level. We also have uh, flow transmitters, uh, measuring flow, MID sensors. And uh, last on this picture is humidity, and this is also very important for uh, special rooms. We have also controlling units, uh, like PID controllers, that was popular many, many years ago. Uh, both with one single loop, and we have up to eight single loop, eight loops controllers, and we have recorders to record up to um, like 50 signals, and we have also Turisto controllers. We have transmitters, and we have this old-fashioned mechanical thermostats. That is, for example, a safety limiter, or just a limiter, or just a control switch. And uh, it's very popular uh, for heating elements. Uh, down on the bottom, on the right side, we have an electronic safety limiter with seal 2 and 3. Um, that can be useful. It, it has ATEX and ESEAX also. Also very popular by heaters. So, what I'm going to talk about is mostly applications. I have some pictures, and I will tell something about it. Um, this, you know, I hope, different types of ships. So, we can talk about many applications, but I red marked some of them. The most hottest thing right now in the market is ballast water treatment. Is it also that in Greece? Yeah, I think so. So, and I think uh, Tanasis told me that you know all about this. Why? We're cleaning the water in ships? Yes? Of taking away the microorganism. So I will go to the next slide. So 
So you will have uh, customers within two segments. We have the uh, chlorine um, and we have the UV light. So that is what we have focused on. And I think the chlorine is the, the biggest cleaning. Um, yeah. So, uh, 8th of September 2007, uh, IMO uh, made a decision that every ship should be uh, retrofitted or fitted with a, a ballast cleaning water system. So, we uh, have been working together with one Norwegian company, Optimarine, uh, since 15 years ago. I think they were the first one that built this kind of machinery. And now we also work together with Alpha Laval that we are putting sensors in. So this is a typical uh, application picture. You use the salt water, as you maybe know, and you electrify it and you get chlorine, um, chlorine out of it. And this chlorine is killing the microorganism. So I'm back again to some uh, products that is approved uh, for uh, the marine sector. We can see on the on the left side there there is a, a conductivity uh, measurement instrument that can measure conductivity. Also the salinity, how much salt there is in the water. Um, above you have a controller. You can use that for for temperature, pressure, or pH or conductivity. And we also have a PLC system, uh, you see in the middle, we have uh, some pressure transmitters, we have some um, mechanical uh, level switches with read contacts, come to that later. And now, some approvals, we have made a Korean register approved for this uh, connectivity uh, measurement instrument because it was a demand for this Korean customer. Uh, our French colleagues has made some yeah, temperature sensors and uh, pressure switches. The one on the left is a pressure switch. And in Sweden, where I'm from, we also made one sensor, Burevertas. Uh, uh, and our Chinese colleagues, they um, approved these sensors for the CCS, the Chinese Classification Association. And our Russian colleagues had made this through Russian uh, marine uh, register, also some pressure transmitters, and uh, also some ATEX and ESAX sensors. So, success stories. I put in some name of some Greek partners from Uteco. So, maybe you're sitting in a room, some of you. Nobody breaks. Everybody's here, okay, perfect. So, the next picture is uh, actually a Norwegian customer. Uh, they make incinerators, so burning waste, uh, as Tenasis told you about before. But what we are selling to this customer is a high temperature sensor and also a low temperature sensor for uh, the uh, circulation water up to 100 degrees. And they're also a pressure transmitter, they have a PLC inside of it. Do you know about it? Norway? Do you know this customer? Yeah. You deliver to them? P uh, Pyro, I think. Pyro in uh, Yes. Yeah. Okay. And this one is also, uh, this is a ballast water treatment system. And this is the company Optimarine in Norway. Maybe you have seen it on, on ships or something. I don't know. This is, yeah. And we are delivering temperature sensors there. But they also have in these applications, they have pressure sensors, they have flow sensors, they have PLCs. Are you involved there also? Yeah. So um, I can mention also that we have uh, Alpha Laval as a customer. We deliver both temperature sensors and pressure sensors to them. 
this facility here or this machine uh, makes uh, fresh water, it takes salt water and makes uh, drinking water out of it. In normal cases, we use uh, for this customer uh, pressure transmitters and conductivity cells to measure the, the, the saltiness in the water plus, uh, plus the instrument. This is also a Norwegian customer. And we also have uh, ATEX thermostates. If you have a heater, there are many types of heaters, but you uh, often need to have a, a safety thermostate. So if the heat, the temperature rises too high, it has to cut out the element. Uh, and it has to be reset uh, manually with a button. So uh, these black boxes, our customer in Norway takes it out and put it directly into the heater. Um, but you can also put this electronic device together with the temperature sensors, uh, together with uh, inside of the, um, beside the heating elements. Um, this is a cargo control and monitoring. This is our application. Uh, we have Extronica in Norway. You know about them, maybe? Extronica? No, in Trondheim. They make these uh, level systems for the Balax tanks. So they're monitoring uh, which level there is in all of these tanks on the boat. So, so we have this uh, level probe that is made of uh, titanium. Uh, that you can put on, but we also have that in stainless steel. So this is another one, it's a compressor maker in uh, Norway. Um, in this one you also have a PLC, you have uh, temperature sensors, pressure sensors, and so on. And, and this is um, filled with ammonia, I think. You can also have uh, CO2, carbon oxide, as a cooling media. Um, so it's very, very important that the sensor is top quality that is sitting here. Because if you have a leakage in the ammonia system, you will get, yeah, you will not feel so good afterwards for the CO2. So one application for the uh, mechanical uh, level sensor we have, Uteco have them also. It's like we have this uh, mechanical construction with uh, a float and there is several reed contacts inside of it. So it can give a signal on and off or you can have like uh, uh, 4 to 20 milliamps out of it. It's depending. So. And these uh, are available in different shapes. I mean, you can have it up to four meters, uh, one of them, and the one in the middle on the left. Um, so we have several read contacts inside of it. And you can see it has ATEX and also ESEX approval. Uh, and I know for the American market, it's very important for them to have ESEX because they don't, uh, they don't like ATEX. So we, when we sell these applications, uh, ESEX is very important. That's the last one. This is a machinery from China, so this is the boat engine from China, and I know we have um, um, put in temperature sensors to monitoring the, the temperature, and we also put in, I think it's only the temperature of, uh, of the engine, I think it's thermocouples. And this one is a Korean um, ballast water treatment system. Um, we can see on the picture on the right, the, the blue box there, there is uh, measuring the uh, sal salinity of the water. And some more pictures. So. And the last, and not the last one, but this one is a big container ship. Uh, this is my French colleagues that had made this application that was with, with a PLC, our PLC. And um, it contained 9,200 containers per ship. And they have nine uh, areas, including three ATEX zones. 
and uh, our system was controlling 54 fans in a total power of 300 kilowatts. And what we're doing is we're monitoring uh, the temperature, humidity and CO2 in the system. And they had actually sold 10 of these ships in this system. So. So, we control and uh, monitoring uh, these values, temperature, humidity, and CO2, and also have a counter, uh, how long it should be going, and also on and off for these nine zones. And we also record in our system the values, because they want to see trends, and so afterwards, uh, it's very popular nowadays that they uh, uh, want to evaluate the, the values uh, and the cabinet looked like this and you can see the controlling system in the middle and, and that was the picture we made and the picture we made for them uh, where you can see the temperatures and the humidity. So the final slide I have Maybe I'm too quick, I don't know. Do you know about this company in Sweden? Climon? Have you seen it? They were founded 2011 and uh, they're located in Stockholm. They have around 70 employees right now. Uh, so their focus is on the uh, ORC market. Uh, for in the beginning it was for ships, but uh, they also made it for uh, geothermal applications or other things. Um, so what they do is basically I have some more slides, but they they take the waste heat from the ship, 70 degrees, and turn it into electricity. They are like 35 companies in the world that can make this thing also, but they are the only one that can come down to 70 degrees uh, and make electricity out of it. So, I have another picture here, I think. So, basically, it's a refrigerator. So you put in... Um, uh, you measure the, the temperature difference be between a heating circuit and a cooling circuit, and uh, and this is converted to a, a mechanical, and somehow they can make electricity out of this uh, function. So this is a good customer for us. They're buying temperature sensors and pressure sensors from us. But in this typical application, there's also flow sensors and also PLCs uh, here. So this will be a booming market, not only on chips, but only on land, especially this uh, geothermic. So this was my last picture. Any questions? Otherwise, you can talk to me later. So, thank you.